The world order is being challenged. Right now, the different sides are gathering their allies, both in Putin and Xi Jinping and Joe Biden and the allies. This is something you need to pay attention to because this is going to change your life entirely. The world is not what you thought it was last week. It is different and it is changing. And you, if you are an investor in particular, need to be aware of what has happened and what is about to happen. This week, we saw Joe Biden go to uh, Saudi Arabia this coming week, we will see Putin go to Turkey and Iran. The sides are being chosen for what comes next. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. I believe that this Saturday's Wall Street Journal will go down in history as a view of the future. This was the front page, and it is a picture of uh, Joe Biden and the uh, crown prince of um, Saudi Arabia meeting. This was Section C, and it is a picture of a drawing of, Alexander, of Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping um, basically declaring that they are going to take control of the southern access of the world, and that would be from Asia uh, down through Africa and South America as they create the next superpower. And I'm very serious about this, and they have been working to make this happen for years, and the uh, invasion apparently was something that has been planned out quite well, and that the allies and the on one side and on the other side are now being determined, and we're going to find out how it is going to affect our world economically, and as it affects our world economically, it will have a direct effect on your stock portfolio. So it's essential, I believe, for me to have a firm understanding of what has happened in the past and what is happening in the future and how the people are lining up and how this might play out relative to my financial future and my investments in the stock market. So that's what I want to dig into and I want to share my insights. I am not an economist and I am certainly not a political expert, but I do understand history and I have stuttered, studied history and this looks very, very familiar to about 1937, 1938 as Adolf Hitler was laying out his plans to expand Germany into the world and take his rightful place for the Aryan race. Uh, I think we have something similar going on, and I think it's worth taking a strong look at. We need to recognize that Europe needs oil, uh, and they need food. And this war is going to center on those two objects, food and oil, energy, let's say, as we move into the winter months when energy becomes paramount for the heating of the European continent. What I think also that people aren't recognizing is that that is why Joe went to uh, the, the crown prince of um, Saudi Arabia. Can you imagine the phone call? Joe was tapped by NATO uh, to contact Saudi Arabia and make arrangements that Saudi Arabia can supply the oil uh, to Europe that is going to be in jeopardy as a result of Russia turning off the valve. And can you imagine the phone call? Joe calls up the crown prince and says, hey, I need your help, guy. I, I need to uh, have you fill in and promise you'll help these uh, uh, European countries and maybe even India and some of the other countries who are reliant on um, on oil from Russia that and that would include China. So we need to we, we need to put this together. And I, I suspect the Crown Prince said something to the effect, are you shitting me? 
You're calling me, Joe Biden, and asking me to help you. You're the guy who called me a pariah, a, 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 a nobody and somebody who should be ignored. And now you're asking me for help? You got to be shitting me. And Joe said, no, no, Crown Prince, we need this. We need it. We need it very, very, it's very important. Then you come beg, come to my palace and you beg me for it. You give me some credibility that I deserve or we got nothing to talk about, Joe. So what did Joe do? Joe got on an airplane and did a fist bump with the Crown Prince because it's that important you need to recognize the importance of this because this war is going to be fought over oil and food. And there are certain nations that don't have a lot of each. Certainly Europe, uh, Pakistan, India, uh, China don't have the oil. South Africa and South America don't have the food. Well, why don't they come to us? We've ignored them. For the last 20 years, we've basically said our efforts are going towards the terrorists of, of the Middle East, and we ignored them. At the same time, China opened up their World Belt program and made arrangements to go into Africa and build infrastructure and help them come to a better place in their life while we ignored them. Yes, that's what's happened, and that is what's happening. And this is a plan that was put in place many years ago, and because of our changes in, in government from Obama to Trump, to Biden, we had three different administrations that had three different policies, and none of them gave any attention to the people who control one-third of the trade in the world and two-thirds of the population. We ignored them. Vladimir and Xi Jinping did not. And now they're playing their cards. Now they're rolling the dice and they're saying, we're going to take control. We don't need you anymore. The United States has, create, was, has been the superpower and you, do, you play by their rule book or you don't play. There are certain people who have come to strength who say, we don't like that. The biggest of that being China. And China has declared, openly declared, by 2040, we will be the dominant economic, social, and political power of the world, and we will replace the United States. Has anyone else ever said that? Yes. Google the name Nikita Khrushchev, and, and the, the beating, he took his shoe off at the UN meeting and beat it on the table and said, we will dominate the United States of America. Nikita didn't get it done, but don't think the plan went away. It's been un in the making for the last 40 years, and now it's coming to fruition. You must recognize that there are needs within this world that people cannot fulfill on their own. You need to read the book that I have been promoting for the last two weeks, The End of the World is just the beginning, the mapping, mapping of the collapse of globalization. There is a a world that we have built over the last 40 years where everything is in peace and harmony as long as we're at the top of our throne. And that has worked well for us in the past. But there's been some unhappy people in the choir. If you don't recognize them, recognize that as we placed sanctions on Russia this past month and a half ago, they, there, are, there was 25 countries that abstained and said, well, we're not sure. There was another 50 countries that said, no, no, we're going to keep open our relationships with Russia. We're not going to stop buying oil from them. And that included places like France the, the, and, and China. So, we are not in the power position that we thought we were. As I've explained in other videos, we are in a strong position. We have all the no oil we need. We can feed our population, but we are dependent on China 
for the uh, the stuff that we need, everything from iPhones to Nike shoes, and we need to change that. We need to reach out to our neighbors to the south that are storming our borders with people, and we need to say, hey, it makes sense that we, we gave up our are manufacturing for cheap labor, and we got tens of thousands of people standing in our, our southern border who would love to become that cheap labor to produce our iPhones, to produce our Nike shoes, to produce our socks and our clothing. They'd be happy to do that. But why don't we come together with a policy to make a decision to do that? Because we've dealt with it for the Obama uh, administration, the uh, Trump administration, and the Biden administration, and we can't make a decision. There's currently a bill in front of Congress allocating the funds to build a chip plant. It's called the Chip Bill and build a plant in northern Ohio. And we all, everybody knows it has to be done and everybody agrees on it, but it can't get through the Senate because Mitch McConnell wants to add some riders on it that will give him other things that the Republican Party wants to get done so that they can get reelected in, in the midterm uh, uh, election. So the reality is our system is what is beating us. We cannot make a decision without somebody standing up and saying, no, we're not going to do that. No, we can't trust the, the big tech companies to, to take us into the future. We're just going to let Russia and China walk all over us. And that is what is happening. India. India is a fine example. We have, hell, Mark Zuckerberg gave them free internet service over there if they'd sign up for, for uh, Facebook, which is a little iffy, but they depend on Russia for their military equipment because they have a ongoing battle with some of their neighbors. Thus, they are in between a rock and a hard place, and they are becoming a part of this, this southern axis that uh, Russia and China are uh, working to put together. Then where do you think North Korea will line up? And with their nuclear weapons, do you understand the importance of this and how this, how what happened last week is going to change your world? And what's going to happen next week? What's happening next week? Vladimir's going to Iran and Turkey to negotiate their situation as to whose team they're going to be in. Turkey has been the strong negotiator to try to bring an end to the Ukraine war, but Vladimir's not sitting on his hands. He's made decisions. He made decisions years ago. Xi Jinping has made years Year, decisions years ago, and we can't get a chip bill out of Congress. And Intel is throwing their hands up and saying, what do you want from us? So what do we do as investors? Well, I think it makes it a little clearer why Warren Buffett bought um, Occidental Petroleum and, and doubled down on his position. He sees that we are going to be, if not in war, we're going to be in conflict with a two superpowers who want to become the superpower. And oil and food are going to be the, 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 the weapons of destruction, as well as cybersecurity. Once they make the decision that we are going to put the U.S. down, they're going to pull every plug they've got, and they're going to wage every basic tool they have to, to work against us. Now, is that say that, okay, we get rid of everything but oil stocks and food stocks? No, I don't think you're still going to be able to stop the advancement of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and quantum computing. Technology will continue to march on, but we must recognize the the adversaries that we have, and that we have to come together as a nation. And I mean, this is not, I can't throw all the blame on 
Congress and the Senate. No, some of the blame is in your living room because you are so objectionable to anyone else's ideas. You don't see the, the who the real enemy is. If we lose this fight, if we lose this fight, the 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 person who will beat us is us because we have everything we need to stay the world superpower. We have the geography, we have the demographics, we have the political system, we have the smartest people in the world, we have the educational system. Those people in Washington that we put there but don't hold responsible are working against our best interests. Our future is at stake. It came together last week. Did you recognize it? If you didn't, ask yourself why not. If your advisors, if you have a financial advisor, if you have a, any form of advisor, did they inform you about it? Did they, did they give you any feeling of the importance of it. I ask you not to ask them. Don't ask them for a month and see if you hear anything from it. Go to go to CNBC, go to Bloomberg's, go to Fox Business and see if anybody mentions what happened last week and what's happening next week with Vladimir going to Iran and Turkey. This is a pivot point in our life. And we need to pay attention. If you are interested in taking care of your life and your future, and you'd like to have a, a forum where you can come together and talk about things like this and exchange ideas and ask questions, first of all, come to my Friday Stock Talk. It's every Friday at, at, at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time when the market closes. And you'll find that at, through our Discord. We, everybody who's a member of our Discord gets a notice. Just like everybody this morning got a newsletter that went, that Trent, my son who works with me, went into great detail about the banking situation right now and the lack of liquidity in the stock market. Look at the volume of the stock market. We're in a liquidity crisis. If you don't understand it, it's going to hit you in the side of the head just like this did. So my goal is to bring to your attention those things that I have learned from history. Yes, I learned from history and bring them to your attention so that you can make better investment decisions, so that you can keep more of what you make, and so that you can make a difference in the lives of those who follow you. I'll talk to you again tomorrow, and I'll bet it's even more scary than it is today.